Good morning guys, it's your girl Liz from Pretty Progress 23. Welcome back to the Acne channel. Today's video is going to be about something that I hold very, very dear to my heart. As somebody who has a relatively large following on Instagram, people often see my before and after photos where I had severe cystic acne all over my face to clearer skin right now. And the question often is, did you take Roaccutane? The answer is no, and I will never take Roaccutane even if my skin breaks out again in the future. And I want to make it very clear that I am shedding no negative judgment on somebody who is taking Roaccutane. I'm simply sharing my personal experience, the reason why I don't take it and why I never took it. I have very strong reasons and I'm going to pretty much let you guys know what it is, what side effects there are and the main reasons why I don't take it. And hopefully this just helps you make a more informed decision and to know more a bit about my journey. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, what is Roaccutane? Now, they have different names, so you might have heard like Accutane, Roaccutane, or Isotretinoin. There are other names, but those are the three main names. This type of medication has the active ingredient derived from vitamin A. And the primary aim is to really attack the sebaceous glands, stopping your skin from producing oils. Now, this kind of seems like a good thing. So no oil means there isn't a high risk of clogged pores or acne breakouts, but that comes with a number of side effects. So your body needs this normal production of oil, sebum, to lubricate the skin, to lubricate the eyes, to lubricate your joints. And that absence of it causes a number of side effects. So you can have dry eyes, dry lips, cracked skin. I've also had a few people message me saying that their vision was impaired and it's caused permanent damage. So they now have to take continuous eye drops, even stopping Roaccutane. Some people also said that their acne has relapsed. You can also have liver issues as well as birth defects. So that's why the doctor prescribes you birth control pills, because if you take Roaccutane and you fall pregnant, you could severely harm your baby. Now, birth control pills itself has a number of issues issues and I have spoken about these so much on my page so please check it out. So many doctors and dermatologists easily prescribe these medications and they don't look into the long-term side effects. Look into Jolene Brighton's Beyond the Pill. If you're somebody who's experiencing depression, mood swings, you have like a coated tongue, you have digestive issues, you have hormonal period pain cramps, all sorts of things, please heal with a naturopath. Please Go beyond the pill and see more about how you can be your body's advocate. Because look, I understand that they do have a place, but because it's the first line of treatment, it should be more thoroughly researched and you can't just trust your one doctor. You have to go and get multitude of opinions. Okay, I'm going to go back to the topic of Roaccutane because I kind of got off track here, but it kind of goes hand in hand. So with these side effects, I understand that some people weigh out the pros and cons and they believe that having clear skin is worth taking the risk. Personally, I'm not somebody who wants to play Russian roulette with my body. I kind of already know that my body's quite weak. The one of the main reasons why I don't take it is because my older brother took Roaccutane when he was about 18 years old and he almost died. Um... And it's just heartbreaking because at that time, I didn't understand how harsh that drug was. Oh, I'm getting a bit emotional just talking about it. He had severe cystic acne all over his face. And the doctors told him to take Roaccutane for nine months. And he did. And he started having nosebleeds like probably every couple of days. And we just thought he was unhealthy. We just thought like maybe it's just like he's not hydrated enough. But it was the main side effect of Roaccutane. We could see that he purged in his first couple of months. And then his acne started healing. But then he experienced liver issues. He was like, it was very heated. And he had muscle joint issues. And he was just kind of experiencing chronic pain. And after Roaccutane, he checked up his liver and it was still out of range. The count wasn't right. He had like patches of hair missing and he was really really depressed and he felt so low in his life that he kind of shut himself from the outside world and he wanted to take his life and in the beginning you know coming from an asian household people don't really like my asian parents don't really see depression as a real diagnosis they think it's all in the mind they think like taking a walk outside or taking deep breaths will help but it goes beyond that and because I'm a lot younger than him, I'm about like eight, nine years younger than him. And I wish I understood and I listened to him. He was fortunately able to get out of that 
rut. He did meet somebody who kind of like helped him realize his worth and he got the support he needed. But to this day, he still has these side effects in terms of liver issues and muscle joint issues, bone joint issues, and also hair loss. His hair is a little bit better now, but it's not as thick and full as it used to be. And he spent his life trying to tell people about the side effects, but not many people would listen to him. So I'm taking on that role and it's a really serious drug that's why i say i don't want to risk it i mean the fact that i could have lost him it's just so scary to me the thing is i understand that the world is very judgmental i've experienced it myself where people said nice things about me about my you know oily skin and how i look disgusting um, and I cried myself to sleep on so many nights, but there are other ways of healing because your body is so strong. It's capable of repairing itself if you're giving it the right support system. I just don't see the logic behind taking a drug that will cause a number of issues that is not healing to me. Take what I say as a grain of salt because I know that there are many, many different experiences out there. That's one of the main reasons why I don't take Reactane. I talk a lot about natural healing as well as skincare lifestyle changes, dietary changes in my other videos. So definitely check that out. Basically to sum it up, I pretty much healed through Chinese herbal medicine. I was able to change my diet in a way where, it's not strict by the way, I changed it in a way where it's just less inflammatory foods. So less dairy, excess meat, having a range of vegetables and fruits. I'm also making sure that I increase my blood circulation to renew the nutrients underneath my skin to help my can repair itself at a faster rate sleeping patterns are also important hydrating and just really changing a lifestyle because it's really important as well as the right skincare and so this is what this whole acne channel was about it's about holistic healing looking at other people's experiences and i also understand that people have had success stories with racutane and they didn't have all those side effects so you know your body best make the decision that's right for you do extensive research and always make sure that racutane is last resort the absolute absolute last resort this isn't to scare you or anything i just wanted to put my two cents up here and upload this video because this is a frequently asked question and again i'm speaking from my personal experience i hope you guys find what works for you no judgment whatsoever and if you want to share anything definitely comment down below and don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys more often on here and yeah i hope you guys have a lovely day and big kisses Mwah. bye guys